Heidi Ho YouTube. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Um, I just rolled out of bed. It's eight something in the morning and I brought my dogs out so they could run around in the front yard. And um, if you notice that I'm wearing the same shirt that I wore yesterday when I did my video on um, that had my little flower crown, I am wearing the same shirt, and the reason I'm wearing the same shirt is because I slept in it. Yep, I dusted off the garbage junk, and I slept in my clothes last night. Now, that is not unusual for me. I sleep in my clothes all the time, particularly when uh, my husband is gone. I It's like I need to be, you know, ready to run if something bad happens. Sometimes I'll even sleep in my slippers which really aren't my slippers, they're really his slippers, but I appropriated them. So, I don't know, more idiosyncrasies. I don't, I don't just, they just keep coming. Um, but the reason I, 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 I wanted to talk to you this morning is, I saw a video by Soft Pink Stardust, and she was talking about offering to help people with their organization. If they have a space that they don't know what to do with, to take a picture, do a video, send it to her, and she will give them ideas. She is extremely good at organizing. Um, very OCD about it, and proudly so. And <laughs> she was talking about how um, whenever she watches Hoarders, she will go and clean something. Well, I have my own fear-induced cleaning story that I wanted to share with you. I don't think I've shared this yet. Um, I'm going to get my crochet and crochet while I talk. Uh, <laughs> so years ago, uh, probably, I don't know, back in the 1980s sometime, my mother's family, who is originally from, or which is originally from um, Oklahoma and Arkansas, that's where they landed, um, they were having a family reunion, and this family reunion was being held um, here in the central San Joaquin Valley. You know, lots of Okies and Arkies ended up in the central San Joaquin Valley of California because they, um, when the Dust Bowl happened, they were farmers, and they had to find a place to farm, so they came out to California to farm. Well, so much, you know, much of my transplanted family is that is here in the valley is from there anyway. So they're getting all these people together to come to this big family reunion. It was so exciting. My mom was just, she was just reveling in her southern girl. I get to see my people. <laughs> it was too cute. All right. She she gets an accent when she starts talking about her family. Anyhow, so we all get all dressed up and we're heading out to this little farming town and out in the middle of the valley somewhere then we you know pull into town and town is blink blink and you miss it I mean it was that small and very um unprosperous little area um unprosperous looking ill-kept Ill looking so we turn onto the street and we're looking at these little houses and you know most of them were kept up pretty nicely smallish little you know houses um so we thought okay good it's not gonna be that bad and then we spot this house down in the middle of the block the lawn was nothing but gopher holes i mean the lawn was a lumpy brown mess of gopher holes when we pull up close to it, you could see that instead of um, curtains on the windows, there was foil over all the windows. Of course, all the cars are parked in front of it, so we knew that was our destination, and we were right. So, park the car, get out, pick our way through the gopher holes to the front door, which I think was standing open, if I recall correctly, and go inside to meet our people. Well, first of all, our people were sweet and lovely and wonderful. And, and so many of them had come from, from Oklahoma and Arkansas that, um, for this reunion that it was, it was kind of cool because we were, you know, kind of experiencing people who live in a different area, which we didn't do much of when we were that young. So that was kind of neat. And they were, they were lovely. Um, and like most families, all different walks of life. You had the rich uncle and you had the, you know, the, the crazy aunt that 
they had to check her out of the mental institution to bring her, and you had the, you know, the born-again Christian family with the 15 children, and you had, you know, the bachelor uncle whose boyfriend was probably back at the hotel. That, the whole deal. I mean, you had everybody. It was a microcosm of the United States, so that was cool. But the woman who owned this house was a very, very old aunt, and she lived there by herself. She would have been my great aunt or great, great aunt for all I know. And she was a hoarder, and she was, I think, unable to see the dirt. So she, I don't know who cleaned for her. Somebody must have cleaned the place before this thing. You could tell that surfaces had been wiped down and stuff had been shoved into corners and stuff like that to make some walk space. But, but th th this was, the, the, here, here are the highlights. So you, you're in the living room, which is in completely dark, right? Except for the lamps that are turned on because there's no light, no natural lights coming in through the windows. And the floor wasn't like, you know, hardwood with a carpet or cement or, or, you know, carpeted. It was overlaid with all these different little weird, strangely cut pieces of carpet, like remnants or maybe samples. It's hard to explain. And they were, everything was overlaid, so it was a danger. But she had also run all the cords for the lamps and who knows what else underneath these carpets. So the carpets kind of had this, you know, this sort of hills and valleys kind of terrain. <laughs> You really had to be careful where you where you stepped. And I we went into the living room and I was sitting on a settee of settee of some kind and I was sitting there with next to my mother and her sister. Um and they were oh god they were trying so hard to be positive and upbeat and ignore the chaos around them. They were being just such good polite southern women, right? And they were picking at their little paper plate of food. Well, on the paper plate of food, they had they had each put a helping of fruit salad. Now, remember the term angry fruit salad? Okay, they must have gotten that idea from this bowl of fruit salad. It was huge. I mean, this bowl was just monstrous. I, I don't know how many pounds of canned fruit they had to have bought to make this fruit salad, right? And it was glistening like it was covered in, I don't know, Mod Podge or something, and it smelled funny. So I didn't try it. You know, I was, I was a little bit brighter than my mom and her sister. A little bit, I was a little bit more ready to, um, to throw in the towel and accept that I was in a bad food experience and not to take any chances. Well, these two women are sitting next to me, and they're delicately taking little bits and kind of nibbling at it to see if it's safe or not and then say how good it is, right? So they each took a bite of the fruit salad simultaneously. <laughs> my, my mother's chewing and her smile suddenly falls off her face and she stops chewing. She looks over at my aunt who was doing the same thing and they, they did that thing with their eyes where they look around and they both very carefully, surreptitiously, spit their fruit salad out into their napkins. <laughs> and then I think they giggled like eight-year-olds. It was priceless. I, I will never forget that image of seeing these two sisters just really, really trying to go with the flow and having a hard time. Okay, so that was funny, and lots of other funny things happened, but the other, the thing that made me go home and clean is this. So, my niece, who was, you know, this big at the time, she needed to go potty, so we had to take her to the bathroom. Go into the bathroom. Bathroom smelled funny. Not, not like, you know, excrement or pee or anything, but it had this weird smell. The toilet was, and because there's junk everywhere. It's all piled into neat piles and stacked and stuff, but it's everywhere. Well, the toilet had a, like a foam pad on the toilet seat, you know, a round foam pad with a hole in it, because you'd sit on this thing, right? And it was attached to the t toilet seat with strips of red flannel. 
someone had very carefully wrapped this red flannel all around this toilet seat, probably in the 1950s, maybe. It was worn, okay, and it was wet. We, my, my niece went to sit on this thing and she jumps off and, Mommy, it's wet! So my sister and I had to hold her suspended up over this toilet. Poor little thing. So, well, you know, we're getting her cleaned up and getting her ready to take back out into the house. I noticed that there were these cosmetics and the health and beauty things sitting on the on the counter. And I looked and there was a jar of Vaseline. I kid you not, it was a glass jar of Vaseline, probably from the 1940s, maybe the early 1950s. It still had Vaseline in it. It was still being used. I mean, can you imagine what has happened to all those petrochemicals in the intervening years? How they must have like morphed into something? I, I don't know. I, I just, it's just being in the bathroom with that old Vaseline kind of scared me. So after that experience, we decided it was time to leave because my sister and I both had to pee, right? But we weren't going to go anywhere near that toilet. So we made our good, oh yeah, we've got, a, uh, this girl's got a blah, 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 making all these excuses about why we had to leave, you know, see you guys later, bye bye. And we had driven in together, so it was easy for us to leave together. So we zoom out of town as fast as we can, and then we have to drive, you know, I don't know, three hours to get to through all of this farmland, right, to get home. And so we weren't anywhere near a gas station and we both had to go, so we pull off into a field, right? And whatever crop was growing was nice and tall so we could like, you know, sneak in between the rows and do our do our pee business really quick and then jump back and go. So by the time we get home, I had undergone some kind of weird like anti-hoarder temporary but it, I had undergone it this anti-hoarder transformation right I get home to my house which is none too clean let me tell you I this is not the house I live in now which is also none too clean but it was it really it needed some cleaning it wasn't as bad as my great great aunt's house but it was it was um it would have driven soft pink stardust nuts if she'd seen it. Okay, so I go into my house, I go into my bathroom, I grab my big old can of Ajax, and I'm sprinkling it everywhere, just for, everywhere, floors, you know, splash it up on the walls, in the bathtub, in the toilet, in the sink, and I've got my scrub brush and my gloves and I'm scrubbing this whole bathroom down from the walls down with this Ajax and I'm chanting to myself I'm not going to be a hoarder I'm not going to be a hoarder I'm not going to be a hoarder I mean, it was like this mantra right <laughs> I, I don't know I don't think I hosed it down with a hose after but I sluiced the whole thing down and it smelled and was pristine for a short amount of time so that was my um, my scared straight cleaning story. Now, um, occasionally I will do that with my bathroom now, which it doesn't ever get all that bad because it's a tiny little room and it's easy to clean and it cleans up fast and there's like this instant gratification, you know. Toss the Ajax, scrub it down, wipe it down. It smells like wonderful carcinogenic cleaning products and it just it just makes me feel so good so anyway that's my story about being clean scared clean and if any of you guys have a similar story i would love it if you would share it with me because you know that is one of those memories i i will i will hold till the day i die um what am i doing today well i'm out on the front porch obviously oh look at my beautiful roses i posted a picture of these on facebook um i'll bring it up close Yesterday when I cut back all my roses, I managed to save some of the most beautiful ones. And uh, in addition to making the crown, I made this and this. These are all old fashioned like heritage roses. So they have really, really strong scent. Well, the tea rose isn't, but these cabbage roses are. Oh, it's wonderful. So anyhow, I'm sitting here. Dogs are out, just brought them out. They're wandering around. Actually, let's see if I can show you Mallory before she jumps down. Let's see if this works. 
Oh hell, she jumped down, damn it. She's walking along the edge of the of the porch. Looking at those birds up there that she doesn't think should be there. I left the bird's nest. I like them. I don't care. I have to come, you know, you got to clean bird crap every day, wipe it down, whatever. I moved all the furniture over so it doesn't get bird crap on it, but I love watching the birds make their nest. Anyhow, um, so I am going to, um, do a little more yard work, put a few more things away, squirt a few more things down, kind of hit it a little bit, you know, for an hour or so. Um, I am crocheting, there, you can't really see what I'm crocheting, but I'm in this slippers thing. All of a sudden, I'm obsessed with crocheting slippers. I found a pattern that um, make you make this like little booty slipper, and then it has that crocodile stitch around the outside. You saw me do it with the mermaid hat, the, her scales were made of this crocodile stitch. So I'm going to probably make a buttload of slippers over the next week or two. I'm trying to build up an inventory so that when I hit the road with my husband, I will have a bunch of stuff to bring and we can do like pop-up craft shows or we can like, you know, crash craft shows here and there around the United States as we go on our trip. Um, yeah, I'm, I really want to, I want to do that. That would be so much fun. Plus I, I, um, I like to get like all my Christmas stuff done way, way early and I usually make stuff for people for Christmas, not that they enjoy it, particularly my nieces, God bless them, who are all very modern girls, very beautiful, plenty of money, you know, they buy whatever they want. The idea of wearing homemade, hand crocheted, you know, cheap acrylic red heart yarn slippers would never occur to them. But every year I give them something like that, and the reason is, they need to have a tie to their humble beginnings. I mean, you know, life might be rosy now, but someday life could be very grim. And if you don't know how to make yourself your own slippers, if you haven't learned to appreciate um, making do, and if you haven't had an aunt that you know drills this crap into your head on a yearly basis, you know, you could be lost. So. I make them stuff that I'm sure gets thrown into the Goodwill box, but I don't care. Somebody down the end of the line does eventually get the slipper, so that's cool. So anyhow, that's what I'm doing, and um, it's another gorgeous day, just ridiculously beautiful day. I just, I don't know, I should be happy, but I'm not. I want rain, I want drizzle, I want wind, I want precipitation, and I want a lot of it between now and the blast furnace heat of summer that is coming and all of the dead trees that surround us in these mountains I am just scared to death last summer was horrible I mean if you guys remember the wildfires from in California last year they were awful that was before all these trees had died off now we've got this big die off of trees and all of this undergrowth I don't know I think it is a recipe for national disaster I really do Oh, I'm looking at a bunny. Kai, this year, man, we've got bunnies everywhere. And they don't, my dogs don't beg them. It's weird. So anyhow, I think it's time for coffee. I act like I've drank an entire pot of coffee, but I haven't had anything but water since I got up this morning. But I think it's ready. I'm ready for coffee. So on that happy note, I'm going to say bye-bye, and I will talk to you guys later.